Welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dear Alice. We are going to be talking about making small spaces luxurious on here. This was a topic that came in from um, a listener. So thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. And um, all of you, please send in any questions you have or topics you want us to talk about because we've been at this for four years and we feel like we've covered it all, but we're having such a good time. We want to keep the party going. So feel free to send us any questions or topics or even guests that you want on. You can send those to dearalice at alicelanehome.com. That's dear Alice at alicelanehome.com. So today we're going to get into it, um, making small spaces feel luxurious. But first, I wanted to tell you guys about a service that we have at Alice Lane. I don't know if you guys know this, but we have a free design service. It's for furniture. We have over 200 vendors. We also make our own furniture. I feel like we're one of the most well-versed furniture stores on furnishings. We're very particular we're about it. On planet Earth. And I was like, on planet Earth. Oh, yes. I was about to double down and agree yeah. on that. Mm-hmm. So. I, we, we just care very much about getting the look right for the different type of people, which means we have to carry hundreds of lines to do that mm-hmm. and also to make your home look unique to you. So with all those resources, we started another design team five years ago that just does furniture design services in for your house. And the service is free, but they're going to use our Rolodex of all these vendors to get the look in your house. And it's been such a great program. It's it so is. fun. People are loving using it. So if you guys just need to do furniture, um, the home furnishing design um, tab on our website, you should go there, fill it out. They can work within your budget to put together any look. So I just wanted to plug yeah. that. I was about to say, be it a big space or a small space, we yes. can help. Yes. Get like feel it's absolute best. And furniture is the most fun. Mm-hmm. It is. So treat yourself by using a free service. It's to the go refurnish something. It's the totally. fun way to spend money. It's w- uh, yeah. It's not putting in like plumbing yeah sucks. new plumbing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't do that. Yes. You so get to touch it and feel it. Twenty four. Yes. It's so fun for sure. Okay, Corey, read a read a review from Tara. Tara, thank you so much for sending this in. We don't have a last name or we'd say it, but uh, she wrote in and said, Dear Alice is my favorite podcast. I look forward to listening each week. At times it's laugh out loud funny and I always finish each episode knowing a bit more about design than I did when I started. I imagine it's not easy to produce a podcast about a visual medium like design, but Dear Alice does it so excellently with professionalism and a dose of humor. Five stars, Jessica Bennett, Suzanne Hall, and Corey Place. Oh, yay. Thank you. Thanks, yes. thanks Tara. <laughs> That's so nice. Kick the mics down. And thanks for the five stars. Yes. I know. Yes, That's we'll so keep fantastic. it up. So fun. Okay, getting into it, I wanted host chat to be to talk about what are our favorite small spaces since we're talking small spaces today. Is there a small space that just like sticks in your memory? For me, I love on the movie The Holiday I love that little English cottage. Mm -hmm. It's just a hug of a space, you know, just like walking in the front door and seeing Jude Law like bend his head just to even get in, that the doors are smaller and that kitchen's so tiny and it's just such an experience. And we all are like, I just want to go and like, yeah, rent a small space for myself and or myself and a few friends and just have it wrap itself around you. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of my favorite small spaces. Isn't it? interesting about a small space like I feel like when I'm thinking about a space that is smaller or like you know when I think about a home I'm like different rooms yeah you know and how those are um you know uh orchestrated together and I'm thinking like you're thinking like square feet maybe even Mm -hmm. square inches yeah you know like in a powder bath like yeah I always think back to size of tile because you don't want yes you know one so in that room you're thinking of square inches Mm -hmm. and it's just the smaller it is like the more detail oriented Mm -hmm you need to be and like it just sounds like I don't know sounds fun to me like Mm -hmm. doing that Mm -hmm. and the small space like when I think of a small space I've always had I've always wanted to live in New York City even if it's just for like a year Mm -hmm. that dream's probably fading now because I have two kids (laughs) Um, but I yeah always envision just like a cool apartment that um, is obviously very small because it's in New York but I would love like you know, it's small, but tall ceilings. And then like, you know, 
dressing like a, it really well. Yeah, like yeah. a wall of bookshelves, and because you have you know nowhere else to like you're store super stuff. Smart. Yeah, you live in New York City. Exactly. New York City. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Dark I've always academia. I love it. I've always like fantasized of that. Mm. I'm like, oh, that would be awesome to have one day. Maybe that's how my life went. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Don't you know? s- never say never. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's what I've always fantasized like a, with the small space. It's yeah. just a cool apartment in New York. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I would say one of my favorite small spaces and it, and usually small spaces are usually dealing with history mm-hmm. because now like I think modern day building, modern day things like usually is larger, especially out here out West. But mm-hmm. when you think of historic spaces, there um, is a restaurant in downtown Provo called communal and it's in this old building. That's just like always been there and they have these two bathrooms and the bathrooms are just teeny. And I just love like being able to tuck in there. And we used to live right by it. And so we'd go on night walks and eat there, or eat at these, some of these old buildings. And I'd always like find an excuse to go to the restroom because I loved it because they would just have a tiny little pedestal sink like in the corner. And it would always be wallpapered really fabulously. And then just like a little toilet. And it, you're just like, you just feel, you feel like special in a small space even a bathroom Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know um just because everything is just like a little different because they had to be different Mm -hmm. you know and like obviously like my attic like our little attic apartment I feel like we've always like lived small Tom and I Mm -hmm. like we lived in a um called the attic apartment it's my parents they own an old historic home in downtown Provo they have two basement apartments that they ran out and they would rent out the um third floor and that's what Tom and I remodeled and lived there for 13 years, aside from our little stint in downtown Salt Lake. Mm. And we just like, I love that place still. And now like I have nieces and stuff that go to the Y that go there and, and they make it theirs. But I'm just like, I'm just so glad, even though we were renting it, that these small spaces, I just like remember just even the evolution of like, there was like this one little nook where I had like my drafting table and that's where I would paint, you know, before we had kids. And then I took out the drafting table to put a crib there because it was just a teeny tiny little nook. But I love that little nook. I love like it was this kind of throwaway in this large hallway. And it, but it was just small. But I just like I loved it. I love looking at pictures of it. And like those little spaces where the ceilings are kind of falling on you. And you just you're just wrapped because like you should like just completely encase yourself in a small space with the same material. Um, we did that and like, you just feel like you're being hugged. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, and, and I like living small and I like that feeling. Mm-hmm. So I love this episode. I'm really excited on how to make it more luxurious and just to be gracious about it. You yes. know, cause I think yep. even in a small space, my mom taught me, you can fit a lot of bodies mm-hmm. and like it becomes really special. So yes, yes, I love that. Ah, so good. And I do love a powder bath. I love that you brought that up. I think it's like everybody's moment in their home is to like go big with design and to do something and make people feel something because you're never going to tire of a powder bath. You don't spend hardly any time in there. You're in and out. But when you go in, you're like, oh, Mm -hmm. and you want like the soap to smell a certain way. And the you know, like you want this whole experience because it's so small and it is such a hug of a space. So these small spaces are worth getting right. And I love so much that, um, um, this question, uh, Rowan and Sue, do you want to read it? It's from yeah. Rowan Graybeck. I'd be happy to. Rowan says, just your average lady here. <laughs> Doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> no design experience, but I have become obsessed with your podcast. We will be building our dream home soon, and I'm trying to make the most out of a small square footage to keep price in check. I'm realizing I love moody, opinionated spaces. I'm curious how you feel about painting stencils instead of wallpaper to get a look for less. Any other tips you have for making small spaces luxurious or where to invest your space or where to invest your space or appreciate it. I'm not willing to sacrifice finishes or design. So I thought I would just go small. Mm. I love that last sentence. Mm. Yeah. I've always said I would much rather just live in a, if I, I'm in a thousand square feet than like a 5,000 square foot that's empty. Yeah. yeah. You know, just that thousand square feet that's just really done like to the mm-hmm. nine and I love every inch of it. Yeah. 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 So I think that's awesome that she's thinking of that. I do yeah. too. Which is why we Spoken came. like a fabulous lady, n- mm-hmm. not an average. Like I'll a, say. Yes. yes. Which is why we came up with a topic of making small spaces luxurious is because Rowan wrote in and asked, how am I going to make all these spaces luxurious? She'd rather invest and make it really, really right. And she doesn't want to sacrifice sacrifice the finishes so she's going to sacrifice the square footage to be able to do it um i think we should first start out by addressing how we feel about painting stencils instead of wallpapering to get the look for less okay here's what i'll say we don't know unless we knew what the stencil was and what your vision was so 
I think anything can be really fabulous. We don't know what your skill level is, your paint level is, um, what colors you're thinking. Like, we don't know any of these things. Mm -hmm. So I think with that, Sue, you had some thoughts yesterday. Yeah, with that. When we th first initially think about stenciling, and again, this is only to our experience, I think of just like a, a sponge painted stencil. You're way more fabulous than that. Probably wouldn't be that, but it would take a lot of time and to be very meticulous to make it look great. And so in a small space, I would rather, I would rather, and because you like moody opinionated spaces versus doing a stencil, um, if it's small enough to wallpaper and you can afford it, awesome. But I would rather see like an opinionated color on the wall and you do fabulous art, mm -hmm. I think is the bigger, is the bigger player, unless you're an artist mm -hmm. um, or you have like, you kind of do some trial and error and you have some time to do it. Then maybe in like, if that's what you want to do, you should do it. But if it was mine, I would just paint it a really dark moody color, be tonal, do something different on the ceiling and the trims, get a great light and a great piece of art. And I'm done. Yeah. Like, Spend the money on art and lacquer. Yes. <laughs> maybe you yeah, lacquer maybe the lacquer, walls. Yeah. Oh, instead, yeah. instead of buying the stencils and the paintbrushes, buy the lacquer. And, mm -hmm. and you could even just get like a little bit of wallpaper and hit the ceiling in the powder bath with that. But I do think invest in the artwork and then the lacquered paint. Maybe it's like ox blood. Maybe it's this really great Kelly green. Nice. Maybe Thanks it's, so yeah, maybe, I don't know what your, what your taste is, but I think you could be really opinionated with a solid wall color and invest in the art and it'd be amazing. But again, we haven't seen your stencil. Yeah, exactly. We don't know what your That'd abilities awesome. are. We're not sure. It's been a while since anybody stenciled. And so it conjures up um, bad ideas in my head. <laughs> yeah. I always love when people are like, you know, zigging when everyone is zagging though. Yeah, so true. it could be cool. No, and Rowan, I've been in a mood it's to like paint awesome. on my walls and like start to do murals. Murals are awesome. And if you're yes. feeling, if you're feeling gutsy and like want to go for it, go for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you do. You. But um, if you're feeling like that's overwhelming at all to you, then I would say maybe even like on fashion runways and stuff, you're seeing like these tonal games with like the red and the pink and the orange and these kind of like analogous colors and doing like a moody color on the wall with a different color on the ceiling. And it's really cool. It mm -hmm. feels very fashion forward and very like, I think luxurious for a small space. Yeah. I love it. So good. So we thought of nine points we wanted to make about how to make small spaces look luxurious. The first one being scale. Yes. Do you want to speak to that? I will speak to this. Okay. Again, I'm going to talk back to the attic apartment because that's like where I think we had the most time in. And I will say that we started out with smaller furniture when we were first married because that's what we could afford. Um, it was vintage and it was like, it was a cool lemon drop velvet sofa and everything. And then when we could afford to get a sofa after I started working and everything, we got like a normal size sofa that was like nice and deep. It had the silver leaf base. It was the, the yeah. blue ticking one and it was big. And we're like, how are we going to get this up the stairs? I think we brought it through a window, but I tell you what, if you can like use scale, I think that's the biggest thing that people often like don't even consider when you're in a small space to use larger pieces, it feels very counterintuitive. But when you can use scale to your advantage, your space feels larger. So use as big of a rug as you can go. So we, like, really, we were, like, side, and initially before we remodeled, it was, like, teal carpet. Mm -hmm. I covered that girl with the massive, like, biggest jute rug I could find, you know, and just covered it, like, square inch to square inch, like, sideboard to sideboard. And then we got, like, a normal size sofa. And I got a massive giant lamp mm -hmm. on a table. And you guys, I grew up mm -hmm. like my whole space, like it just felt so much. You saw it, you yeah. saw it from like lemon drop to mm -hmm. the big stuff. And it like, it's, it's amazing what that did for the space. Yeah. And so I think like, don't, everyone don't was short more comfortable. Sheet yourself. Yes. Don't short sheet yourself, like make yourself comfortable and make it fabulous. Like be, be over the top. I remember when I worked in, um, did my internship in Scotland, I went to this like little home again, history, historic place. They were all small. We went to, into this one designer's home and he had these massive, they had to be like 42 to 48 inches high, both of these lamps on both sides of the sofa. Amazing. And I was just like, what just happened to me? I'm like, there are monuments on your side tables. <laughs> and it was the coolest thing because it was just like, it was the, you know, just that little like shock factor that just like made like art is art, mm -hmm. you know, your space, you know, especially if you're like willing to make these bold moves and not be like, well, it's too small of a space. I can't, I can't afford to have that big of something. I guarantee you that's what the space needs to not only reflect you, but to make the space. It's like absolute most, Yep. you know? So yeah. I think scale is your friend, go bigger than you think. Yep. Um, be gracious with it and be comfortable. So, yeah. 
I agree. And yeah. I, I think there are some companies out there that make furniture like this is furniture for small spaces. For an and so it's like, size. it's like, well, what if I'd actually like to sit down on yeah. it? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's not okay. So it, I, some people that I don't know are like, oh, like I'm going to, I, from my apartment, I'm going to go shopping at Ikea. It's like, I, I probably wouldn't because they're not, they're not doing it right. No do offense like to throwing, Ikea. Do you like throwing away furniture? Exactly. And filling our landfills up with all and of your furniture it. from five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I think that's why like you don't have to like go to a certain s- store to fit like what you think is or what someone has deemed like the scale of your apartment. Mm-hmm. You can buy, you know, like like yeah. a normal size sofa. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. And you just felt so grown up. You're like, okay. We can stay here a few more years. <laughs> yeah. Because we have real life furniture. We can fit friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, more people can be comfortable. Totally. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was like putting an ex- a remodel, like a, a new room on your house. Yeah. It really was. Um, also, art. The skill of your art. You know, just mm-hmm. because you have small walls doesn't mean you should do small pieces. Like, I think the bigger you go, the larger your wall will fill. So, go big. Yeah. And yeah. That's good. Yeah. The next one is a quote by Suzanne Hall. Oh, the next nice. point, which is be insanely interesting yeah. in a small space. That's how I, when you, you said it. So I was like, uh-huh. I have to write it down like yeah. that. Cause I feel like the insanely was important. I know yeah. it's something I like when I was doing my mood board and I, I put it up there. It says, I find it amusing that we're all pretending to be normal when we could be insanely interesting instead. Yes. You know, like why not? We should yeah. be insanely mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. And like you, you'll you feel it in the most like potent saturation in a small space. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we actually just, we helped design a home and it was a very large home. But this, the homeowner, she just, she loves quaint spaces. She grew up, like her parents are both from England. She loved probably the cottage, you mm-hmm. know, from the holiday. And she loves just all things British and all things quaint and cozy. And when she got into this home, which we, we talked about scale and things and um sometimes you don't realize how large a floor plan is until you actually are like your human body sitting in it um and there's so many like charming little moments in her house that she like heavily influenced on how she wanted these spaces to feel but at the end of the day she's like i want something smaller Mm -hmm. you know so like and she's like being bold enough to be like yeah I'm i'm gonna do another one and i'm gonna make it smaller and then she can really feel all those like really brave bold design choices that she helped make She'll be able to fill them in their most like potent saturation and she will feel like she's being hugged, mm-hmm. you know, by taking this and then implementing it into a smaller version, the cozier version of what she wants herself to feel like. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid to push back. Mm-hmm. Also to like to get what you're, you know, you're trying to do right here, to, or sorry, um, Rowan, is to, you know, get great finishes, really do something impactful, but in not sacrifice design because you're like doing it in a smaller space. That's the way I'd want to live. Yeah. Like, yeah, just be insanely interesting. I'd rather be insanely interesting on every square inch of my wall than have, you know, rooms to do cartwheels. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Another really great small space that I love is Suzanne's entry. She doesn't have an entry, much of one. She has a door swing, which is mostly the whole depth of that room. But if you take a step sideways from the entry, there's a little bit of blank wall there which Suze has made a moment, which feels like she has an entry, even though it's not across from your front door. It's just off to the side. You've got our Laurent chest, this big, beautiful mirror, a rosary made out of these beautiful alabaster beads hanging next to it on the wall, which feels like religious and sculptural all at once. You always have fresh flowers. You always have a great candle burning. And you've got great art right next to it, Frida, which is like fluorescent yellow. And it's amazing. And because of the impact of the art, the scale of the chest, um, and it's just adjacency to the entry, you feel like you have a proper entry. Yeah. You treated it like one. You treat it with normal size furniture. And you you gave a moment. You created a space for this, which most people wouldn't even put furniture there. They would have just called it a hallway. Yeah. You know? You might put some hooks. On the yeah, wall to hang, coat to hang coats. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you created a moment out of out of it, and that's what we have is like create moments within your small small floor plan with proper size furniture, not elfish stuff. Like it's not oh. this isn't little tiny. We're not playing small. We're playing big. Yeah, and I th- it grows your walls too. I think mm-hmm. we've talked about that even like with window treatments that if you can go all the way to the ceiling, you've just like grown ten feet. Yeah, like truly. Um, along with the entry, just with emergency remodel on my bathrooms. Like I have a tower portion on my cabinetry 
And I found like this really great concept with these like slatted cabinet doors that again, mm-hmm. kind of increase the verticality of that. Yeah. Line, you know, every yeah. time I pass by that bathroom and I'm just like, do I have 10 feet foot ceilings in there? I sure think I, I think I got a growth like upgrade in there. Cause I will tell you by taking it all the way to the ceiling and to like emphasize just that grandeur, like you feel, even though it's like this tight hug squeeze of a thing and I have, I just love it so much. I love it so much, and it and it looks it looks so much more luxurious. Mm-hmm. So I will say um, to you that Rowan, that just stretch your eye, mm-hmm. stretch your eye. You know, like I would not probably not do like a full wainscoting or anything because that cuts you in half. I would like do full body like wallpapers from like baseboard to ceiling. You know, finishes from baseboard to ceiling mm-hmm. to try and stretch that out, and I'd put big ass art on it mm-hmm. too. And you would hang draperies starting at the ceiling, coming down the wall, and doing full height panels are also going to stretch the eye. Those are space expanding tricks. Even on like the boys' bathtub, because I didn't do a glass door on the bathtub. Yeah, I got I did a shower curtain, but I got an extra tosh shower curtain, mm-hmm. so it would go from ceiling to floor. Cool, that was a real pro tip, you guys. Was a real pro tip. I got mm-hmm. it at Queen Barrel. Anyway, yeah. just so you know, look for extra long shower curtains that will go from ceiling to wall, so you don't again doesn't feel like you, you're wearing Danny K pants you know yeah that cut you in half so yeah just I love try that. and stretch it out that's really good and, and don't I, I guess like don't think that you're in a small space like mm-hmm. treat treat it just as you would any other space and you will I don't know it's it's gratifying to walk in my door and just be like that's really bold or when I opened up the door for pe- like that's my backdrop mm-hmm. when I like welcome somebody in you know yeah. so it changes the rhythm of your space and I feel like you do that yeah. you did it great in the attic uh, your fireplace I feel like that's like another moment that you've created that's yeah. amazing and it mm-hmm. it kind of just gives it like I always reference it to like you know music but if yeah. in if in the verse first verse you did this and then the second verse is t- kind of the same and you but you mess with the rhythm a little bit to like mm-hmm. make it feel different and kind of give it a little yeah. moment and I feel like in design you do that like yeah amazingly and so and, and that's to me what your entry is what your fire you know your your fireplace it's yeah Awesome. Yeah. And, and that was something I like looked at and I was like, oh, okay. Like you want to, you know, like, uh, you know, add dynamics to your yeah. design. And, mm-hmm. and, and that's what I think those things become my favorite part of any space. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah. if, if you do it in a small space, it's, it's potent. Yeah. Very yeah. potent. So that's good. Yeah. Yep. I'll that. say on the fireplace too. Th- these are things, again, you're building a home, so you get to kind of like control what this can look like you know, what that fireplace is. But I thought I was going to be like ripping it out and doing this thing. And I started doing drawings and things. And then at the end of the day, I was just like, I'm going to act. I have these sconces. They're pretty cool. They're like these antiques. And I'm going to like stretch the, you know, again, the width of like the current mantle. Like I had these sconces. I'm like, I'm going to mount those as far wide out, put art in the center. So that again, it feels like a full channel mm-hmm. taking, you know, from floor to ceiling and like just, um, you know, it feels more luxurious. Mm-hmm. And they're wide sconces and I'm gonna do a petite piece of art and I'm gonna do like crazy shades on them because like I should I need I need to F this up. Yeah. You know? And so I think by like making those bold moves, it feels more luxurious. Mm-hmm. Because like and like just because it's a small space doesn't mean that it shouldn't get the attention. And I think back to what um uh Rowan was saying is that she's not willing to sacrifice the finishes yeah. or the design, which is why you're like, you know what? I'm going to keep this fireplace as is. I'm not going to invest in it, but I am going to spend money on custom shades, yeah. right? And on on these really awesome antique sconces that nobody else is going to have yeah. to give me the sculptural element. And so you're spending the money on things that are going to really enhance. Mm-hmm. And also they're the things at eye level. Those sconces are right at eye level. So your eye is going to catch them every time. Yeah, and it's, it's worth investing in. Yeah, totally. So like go all the way with it, right? Yep. Go to the max. I so love good. Um, okay, so paint color. This was a question that came in for Dear Alice, mm-hmm. and I think, Suze, you answered this really, really well. Sue, Sue has eight-foot ceilings. Her home was built in 1970s, and this is a question that comes up a lot for us, which is, what am I going to do with the ceiling? Am I going to keep it white? It's only eight feet. Do I paint it the same color? What's the best method for space expanding, making a small space look like look luxurious? What did you do in your space? I, in every single room, whatever is on the wall is on the ceiling. And the sheen that's on the wall is also on the ceiling. And a lot of painters will be like, no, we do flat on the ceiling to like hide imperfections. Mm -hmm. And at that point, if you're, if I'm a satin, which I usually, that's about what I'm doing on the walls. If I take that onto the ceiling, it's just a complete continuation. It's just like wearing the high bottom 
waist jeans or whatever, your legs look a million times longer, you know, or like the wide leg jeans that go all the way to the floor. You're like, that girl has legs for days. Same thing with your walls. Like if you can take that sheen and I, I like the sheen and I like the, like, I don't want it to be flat and that's personal. So figure out that for yourself. Like what is your sheen? I like satin and I like it on my walls and I like it on my ceiling because it's just a continuation Mm -hmm. and I like to be totally encompassed. So in my, in our public areas, in our little house, like it's steam and I have steam on my floor because we painted our floors and it's steam on the walls and it's steam on the ceiling all Mm -hmm. in the same sheen. So it just like, it feels totally encompassing and it just stretches your eye. Base and case and everything, right? It doesn't allow you to hit a tension line where like one finish starts and one finish stops. Mm -hmm. It just completely keeps going. And so, so yeah, same with base and case. Or I, I will like go to a semi-gloss okay. in like even like a darker sheen or a darker car- color, you know. So if I had the walls in both of my boys' room, one's green, one's blue, like I had the wall color and then I went the tick down to the darker one. And I did all their like very like small finish work in that, but it just looks like a pinstripe, you know, that's just outlined it. And it just looks like I cared. Mm. So I think by doing those details, I think it feels more luxurious than just like you took a sprayer completely to it because at least you're outlining some of that architecture mm-hmm. be it small or big whatever it is um but i do think that that continuation of sheen and color up onto the ceiling i think makes a big difference one thing one tip i will tell you is that in nolan's room i did do like the walls this color and then i took it to a lighter color of that saturation on a ceiling but you can't tell mm-hmm. because of the shadow plane and so I'm like, oh, sorry, Tom, that was a paint change that I didn't need to do. Yeah. <laughs> I should have just, I should have just kept the wall color and oh. taken it up there in the same sheen. But the reflection when my lamps are on and there's just like a glimmer, it just feels infinite mm-hmm. instead of stopping at a flat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Flag, you so know? you almost don't notice the ceiling height because it's like there's nothing pointing it out. You no. know, it's not like oh, th- you know what I mean? Like there's the color change or wh- yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. I think it, that I think even like at the a long time ago, we kind of coined this as well. Like accent walls like mm-hmm. there were these tension lines where you'd have like this one wall it was a red wall back in the early 2000s yeah. and we like every painted a lot of those. one wall uh, red because red they just weren't cute. they weren't bold enough to do the whole room yeah but like it was the, the first thing i saw when i'd walk into a room like that i see where those two paint colors meet i don't even know there could be a giant bear on the other corner of the room like i'm like i just see where those two colors meet and it's like it's tense you know uh-huh. it's a tension line mm-hmm. and so if i can take out those tension lines and just completely embody you know, a small space, it grows it completely. Mm-hmm. And you get to notice the things that are in the room and like the whole composition instead of just the paint mm-hmm. or the finish. And yeah. I think probably every subcontractor kind of narrows in on their lane and like when the room's naked, how does this best look? And what am I hiding in perfection wise? We look at the whole composition. And so mm-hmm. we're thinking, we're seeing a room furnished, you know, designed and furnished. So I'm just like, what is that backdrop? And lived in. And lived in, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And how, what does that backdrop look like? And so, often that's what we're like queuing into, you know, just like, what do we want this to feel like? Do I want it to be dark and moody? Like you're talking about Rowan in these like deep moody spaces, you know, like I think of Lily and August, that Italian, whatever. Do you remember that Milan apartment that she designed? Yes. um, At market. And we just went in and the whole thing was dark and moody. Mm -hmm. The furniture just like popped off. Mm -hmm. It was so good. And I'm just like, I couldn't even tell you what the wall color was, except that it was dark. I think the ceiling was probably the same color Yeah. because all I knew is just like, I felt a certain way in there Yeah. and I couldn't, I couldn't identify where something started and stopped. It was just a mood. Yeah. You know, and you were all in and we actually sat down and we like had a conversation and then we're like, this is going to be so juicy. The environment was so rich. Like what, have, what have you never that told you me, just, Jess? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> spill it, it out. Spill it, it in here. Yeah. yeah. It was so fun. I love an all-in environment. I think that what you just barely shared is some really great advice for listeners. Because so many times the ceiling is such a question. I feel like it's also a big question in wallpaper. Particularly if you're in a room. Let's say you're like in an attic or a bunk room with eaves. And so like the walls are only going up, let's say, to four feet. And then here comes this angle ceiling line you have to treat that ceiling and you've got to wallpaper it the same as the walls to give you that hug back and give you that all in because otherwise you're not even going to hit eye level with the wallpaper and the walls are going to look like they're four feet tall can I tell you how much I hate it yeah I do see like a like there's a a gal in my neighborhood anyway built a house and she like the wallpaper stops at the at the vault yeah 
And I was just like, ah, they ran out. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> shoot, yeah. like that was a total miss when you could have had this cool tent There effect. wasn't, there wasn't enough there wasn't food enough. at the party. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was just so sad. I'm like, no one told her. Yeah. Gosh, dang it, I didn't tell well, that's her. what I mean. Like, we have to pay this we information to forward you. because you've got it. Like, Tan France's closet, we'll put an oh, image up here yeah. of this. That's another space where the ceilings were only like less than three feet tall or the walls were only three feet tall. And then we took that wallpaper onto the ceiling. Suddenly this room feels infinite. It feels tented. It's like this big, gorgeous Complete party tent. Fashion. So Such fashionable. Fashion. If we only treated the walls in small spaces, we would really be missing out on an yeah. all-in experience. Especially when you're dealing with like, vaults. And even if you're like going to a mm -hmm. flat ceiling, treat that ceiling. And especially if you're like into moody spaces and you want luxury, like do a different tone or like you happening in the wallpaper and throw it up there and just like mm -hmm. put a lid on it like and people will be like you're so cool like, yeah this is so rad that you did that so and good it I, pays I, off i think a lot of um my favorite part of tan france's closet that i don't think a lot of people like mm -hmm. uh ever you know saw or paid attention to I, was the wall of mirror oh, yes like going up that, the stairs yeah like yeah that to two me was stories. like yep, you don't yeah. even see the, the mirror because it's reflecting wallpaper so it's again it's all about mm -hmm. encompassing you yeah like it's a whole bodied full mirror is another mirror. good luxury small space 100%. trick you can do antique mirror in a vestibule you can there's a lot of tricks there i want to just quickly preface tan doors tan france has since moved into another home that a different set of designers did here in utah called the fox group and he has a different closet now. We're talking about his previous home in Salt Lake City. We did the closets green striped. We'll show you a picture of it. And it's in our portfolio. Yeah. You can so go look at it. if you guys are following his journey, we did we did the closet just a few years ago before he built this house. Which was so fun. So, was fun. so fun. Yeah, so I, good. I, I just don't think that uh, wall of mirror gets enough credit because really I that agree. is like, in yeah. my opinion, the hero in the space. Yeah, it is. It's, it was it, such it a good a good design move. Yeah. Don't forget about mirrors. Guys, I feel like they could quit listening now because that last set of advice was worth... It took like 10 years to figure out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's the long cut. We just barely figured yeah. out. You're yeah. Welcome. Yes, yep. definitely. <laughs> okay, the next thing we have is real living finishes. Oh, yes. yes. So important. This is the most luxurious thing. We're talking about using... Real stone, real marble. We're not using porcelain countertops that have marble stamped onto them so that you think that they're marble. And when you fill them, you're like, something's not quite right. Yeah. I, scratched, I scratched that vein off. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Or here's the vein, and then there's the same vein right here, and then yeah. it's over here. Yeah. Whenever you can use an honest material, a real material, real stone, real wool carpet, um, I'd say the you real countertop material, real flooring wood. material, yeah. your yeah, real wood, not what are those floors stickers. called? The wood stickers. Floor <laughs> piece. Uh, What's the I'm wood floor LBT? called? LVT. LVP. Also, it's an acronym. also <laughs> there's <laughs> three letters. There's tile that now looks like hardwood. Shit. Nothing makes Suzanne Hall <laughs> matter than a tile hardwood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody was asking about this the other day, and they're like, "So we're thinking about doing hardwood in the bathrooms. Don't worry, it's not real hardwood. It's PVC. P LVP. LVP. And I was like, No. Still shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> then nothing will ever sound right when you walk in there. It's just click, the, click, 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 click. It's yeah, just like the my... worst experience. I I'm so happy it's waterproof and it looks like wood, but you just still shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, honest materials are gonna make your space look more luxurious. Is our point? Yeah. yeah. When we read it again, like, and this was like budget or not, like you can make good decisions. Yeah. Okay, and you should, and. Like in the attic when we redid the kitchen, mm -hmm. like we did marble on our countertops. There wasn't many of them. And so it didn't take that much, but it made all the difference. People still go up there and they're just like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Because we had like uh -huh. marble and we did a soapstone island with like this antique so is the island. Anyway, just like the honest living storytelling in that place is what made it magical. Mm -hmm. I will say that. Like yeah. it's all, they're all honest materials. Like there's nothing Pretending to be something pretending it's not. Pretending to be something else. And yeah. it feels historic. I don't feel like in history they would have uh, they would have done linoleum maybe like in the 50s. But like you know, true history. You ripped out linoleum out sure of your did. bathroom. Yep. Special. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Don't forget. Oh, that's the worst Never thing forget. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this okay. about the real finishes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I made the comment, you know, about LVP, whatever. I, I like engineered hardwood floor. It's still hardwood, mm -hmm. but it has like a, mm -hmm. I don't know engineered yeah, aspect to it where I'm like that's that's long last I don't know why it makes sense in my brain but yeah it does um 
I learned that lesson from actually putting it in a space. Mm -hmm. Like when I did the kitchen in my old home, like I, yeah, I was on a budget. I did LVP. I put it in myself. And every time like a toy dropped on the floor, I had like, you know, my wife was in heels or something. I could hear it. And it was like nails on a chalkboard for me. (laughs) Uh I was like, oh, Oh, that's like. Just acoustically, the, the room will never be right. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Everyone's gonna just hear echoey. It. Yeah. And yeah, the way you talk, you can hear that in the room. You play mm. music in there and it's just like uh, playing in a tin can. Yeah. yeah. It's very reflective and it doesn't absorb anything. That's perfectly said. Yeah. Yes. And, and that yeah. always bugged me about it. And that's why I have the floors that I do now that were more expensive. And yes, they scratch and that mm-hmm. bugs my wife. It's fine with me. But, and that's why I make the comment that I did, it's not to like put anyone else down that has LVP flooring. It's like, I did it myself and I don't like it. And it's okay for me to have that opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And same thing with my, um, countertops in that kitchen. I, it would have been nicer had I chosen a, um, you know, a, a organic material. Yeah. So yeah, we live and learn, you know, know, and even if you like have those like finishes and you've, you've lived with them and you know, you've never heard the sound that Corey's talking about and like, you're not, I don't know. We're so tuned mm-hmm. like to this environment because this is what we do for a living. I think there's just something like just knowing that it's real, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. just so when you do have to replace it, think about that. And there's think, also a depth in character of it. 100%. You can tell looking at a porcelain that looks like marble versus a marble. There's a depth to the stone um, where there's just uh, like a, constant honesty throughout on the edges on everything the way it feels yeah. feels different there's already an imperfection to it it's like perfectly imperfect yeah. you know yeah. and, I th- and I think that that's the magic mm-hmm. you know when you meet somebody and they're perfectly imperfect and they've completely they confidently walk mm-hmm. you know as you know anyway you just you embrace the quirks and you embrace everything and you're just like nothing should ever change about you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's the same thing it is with honest materials and however it wears and how whatever happens through its life if there's stains and things like that you can always rehone it but you can also live with it because that's like the way like life looks mm-hmm. and that's yep. okay yeah and it's good and like in living honest surfaces take it so much more beautifully mm-hmm. than a fake you know mm-hmm. so. yeah so good amen um next point hardware Use mm. use really great metal finishes. I'm just going to make a rule right here for all of us within the sound of my voice. We're not going to use a brushed anything. Not brushed silver. We're not using brushed gold. Mm-hmm. Um, it just cheapens the whole thing. We just want a real honest me- metal as That's it is living. in its finish. Yes, a living finish is, yeah, yeah beautiful. So yeah. our favorite finishes for metals would be um, I polish would say nickel. polish nickels at the top of the list. Yeah, no, yeah. It's warm. It goes with everything. It feels utility. It feels historic mm-hmm. and it just feels honest. Yeah. Like I believe it when yeah. I see it that I'm just like, I know you're not plated, Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like you're the real thing and you can feel it on the weight mm-hmm. of it too. So. Yeah. It's fun to handle it, to turn it, to pull the faucet down. And it's just really fun to be in contact, the shower or whatever it is. Um, we love that. Yeah. So great. You know, it's funny, just like on this topic too, we're going to talk about probably brass too, like unlacquered brass. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, or antique brass. We're in the shop for the hardware for our bathroom. Like yeah. I tell like, Tom, you go, you look at some too. Send, mm-hmm. send me what you like. Send me Where some. are you looking, by the way? I looked everywhere because I try, I'm just like, what can I find that's You're like- You're looking online. Brass. I'm looking online. Right. And so like we were looking at like all the ones that pop up, signature hardware, you know, House of Antique Hardware, you're looking at Anthro, you're looking at Emtech, you're looking at Top Knobs, you're looking, you know, I go to R. Mac Martin to be inspired. Cause oh, what was that last one? R. Mac Martin. If you guys, like, want your, like, whole, like, body to be blown, go freaking to R. Mac Martin. <laughs> How do you spell it? A-R-M-A-C, M-A-R-T-I-N, R. Mac Martin. Uh-huh. Go there to get inspired. But they do such a beautiful job, and then that took me down this whole, um, this whole rabbit hole. But just really quickly, back to, like, when I said, Tom, look some he like sent me some that were potentially a cool profile and they were from signature hardware and it said antiqued brass but if you zoom in i'm just like i know it's not antiqued brass i know it's like a brushed on finish to make it look antiqued Mm -hmm. and i'm like Mm -hmm. i can i can feel the weight of it by looking at it on the screen that it's not going to be what i want Susie's eyeballs are feeling the lack of weight and it's gonna like clash with the real brass trim on my alice sconces yeah and so you have to consider just all these things are going to be touching each other like in the same plane and i'm like cool idea tom not real brass. Mm-hmm. They got gotcha. you. 
Uh-huh. They gotcha. Ah, I gotcha. They gotcha. <laughs> and anyway, and I ended up, I'm just like, who does it better than like real brass than like the freaking Brits, man? Like, yeah. So I got it from, how do you say it? Beta human? I mean, B-E-A-T-A-H-U-M-A-N-E, I think, is where I ended up getting my mm-hmm. hardware. And like, I knew it was real brass when I looked at it. And I knew that it was sculptural. And I, I did the stupid diptych so many freaking times with different hardware. Yeah. And I would send them to you and I'd be like, what does this need to be? And just like that real brass finish was so important to get it right. Mm -hmm. And I spent more on it than I should have for this little teeny camper bath. But Uh it's like, it'll pay me back in spades because that's just what I touch. It's Uh what like I interact with. And like, it looks like sculpture, you know? So just like down to the detail. And if you're sitting on your toilet, you're going to be staring that hardware right in the eyes. Right in the eyes. I can brush my hair, go potty, and turn on my shower at the same time. Yeah. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) That's luxurious living in a small space if I ever heard it. Do you know what? Suze's powder bath is tiny, but what it is is exactly what Rowan's talking about. Mm -hmm. It's honest materials throughout. She has burl wood vanity, real brass hardware from London, our Alice sconces that we designed in real brass and real alabaster. Mm-hmm. She did four of those suckers. Her s- her oh, shower so is the beautiful clay tile, Moroccan tile in this beautiful mint green color. So and it feels like it's from the 1930s. It's just every finish is exquisite. It's tiny, but you go in there and you're like, shh, 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 shh. Mm. Just I need a moment. It's just so good. The double bull nose, by the way, my a gosh. A double bull nose, like I on the countertop. I would be fine if I was sick in that bathroom. Like <laughs> I would be so happy right? in there. I would lay you on a towel on the up. floor. <laughs> <laughs> Very tender tummy. <laughs> okay. uh, Suzanne needs anything it. just barely wrong, uh, and she's gonna be throwing up for twenty four hours. No, Bless her heart. The, but the fun thing about it is that in a small space, yeah. you can afford to do the best. Yes, because there's not much square footage. Yes, so. I exhort you yeah. to just like look at the good stuff and just, yeah. just price it out. Like just yeah. try it out. Don't, you know. And in a small yourself. space, it might be like, you know, $150 more than, than the other thing. Cause you're only buying this many square feet, you know? Yep. So yeah, I, I definitely agree. Like really treat yourself in those small spaces. Yeah. And I did mirror from like the actual backsplash to the ceiling side to side yeah. and put my sconces on top of it. And it feels so luxurious. It feels guys. infinite. Yeah. It does. And like, anyway, you look space, like a billionaire. In I that do. Space. That's another. I'm gonna invite people over like, for a bathroom <laughs> tour. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine if you would have cut that mirror short and then put your sconces on the side, like on the, on the drywall? Rock. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Gosh, my yeah. mirror. You mirror, did y'all. it right. You did it right. Don't and forget I, about mirror for space expanding. Yeah, yep. And yeah, I think there good. will probably be a subcontractor if it's, someone's gonna do that that tries to talk you out of it. But then I think that's where you need to. Talk Jump. them back in. Yes, exactly. She's <laughs> like, I know what I'm doing here. You know what? I'm going to yeah. share something with you real fast because it's something that I ran into. Maybe we'll do an episode on. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the mirror. So it's from side to side, backsplash to top. Because my house is settled, like there's no, like nothing's plumb square straight, right? Yeah. And so there's like these rear shadow lines. And so now what I wish I did, which I'm going to do now, is just get like a little mirrored pencil liner to trace all the way around it instead of just having it raw. I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. I'll just go edge to edge. But they have to shave it in a quarter inch to fit it. And they have to fit their, their like, fing, fingers, fingers in. Or to be able to adhere it to the space. And so, but it now can't I truly see, be I wobble. see these, like, little raw edges. And, like, for most people, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. Mm-hmm. But for me, and if you're really, like, going for it, Rowan, I would just say, like, maybe, like, cut out, like, a border or something just to, like, finish it out. Mm-hmm. If you want to be extra, yes, and be the fabulous lady that you are, yes, because you're not average, my friend. <laughs> totally. Okay. okay next right. point we have is opinionated marble, Ooh. not to be confused with the more plain marbles. If we're doing a small space, if you go with the big, wild, big. mystery meats of things, it's gonna look really expensive, and you're gonna look like you have generational wealth. Mm-hmm. If you do the white stuff, you're gonna look like you did it now. And we're not sure if it's generational wealth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what's the goal, everyone? Generational wealth. Yes, I'll definitely. Suzanne Hall, let's talk about your slab in your bathroom. We need to put pictures of Suzanne up for this. Is it marble? What is that? Yeah, it's like a jade quartzite. Just a jade quartzite. Just a jade quartzite. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I think, and even in like when I was doing my collages, mm-hmm. I had like, I had a white one with like purple veining along with a green. I'm like, oh, that'll be cool. You know, we'll see what we find. And then I went to, 
And then I found, I asked my gal, I'm just like, send me your remnants. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, show me green, show me purple, show me anything wild and crazy that yeah. like nobody wants. Guys, want you that. need to mm-hmm. go in and rub up against somebody at the marble store and Seriously. get to be good friends with them. Like, because once you get cookies. once you get their inside track and you become their girl or their boy, then they're going to take you to the far off corners yep. and start teaching you stuff that you really want. text messages back and forth. 11 p.m.? Stuff. Sometimes. Wow, you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> really good Steph now. doesn't like me like that <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, but she sent me like she sent me one and it was like seemed perfect and then like they pulled it out to like cut it and there was a fracture so I couldn't use that green so I went <sighs> up there and I got to experience like I walked the walk the slab yards and like again when you're small spaces you can like if you find a yard with remnants that's a real a boneyard or something that's a really great way to get a cool piece for not that much because mm-hmm. it's a remnant, you know, yeah. and it's something that they're not going to charge you the full cost of a full slab for. So, um, I saw this remnant and it was this like, mm. and it was polished at the time. And I was like, Ooh, and I went back and forth. I'm like, do I want a polished quartzite? Cause it was so beautiful. Yeah. And then like I had them making me a sample of this like Jade quartzite and homed and polished. And I had my friend, my true, like, be like, am, like, which one am I? Because I'm getting really tempted by this polish, which I never am. Yeah. I'm not a polished girl. Yeah. You know, and and just is like, you're honed. Duh. Uh-huh. Like, duh. Yeah. You know, but like, it was just like this fabulous full saturation. Again, it's a full encompassed space. And in a small space, like, try not to be too contrasting with like a lot of different things. Make sure that, I, I really do believe in that. Yeah. Make sure that whole space just kind of encompass you and then add things on top of it. But mm-hmm. Anyway, Suze's wall color is also a similar shade to her green quartzite. Imagine, like, you know, the melting chocolates, the green one? That's the color of my walls. Yeah. It's green melting chocolate. And then you have this, like, honed, and the hone look better with the tile. And it's just opinionated. And everybody that walks through, they're just like, what is this? Yeah. They've never seen it before because who does, like, a green countertop like that? You don't even think to think that your space is small. You're just in awe of the finishes that have all come together for this beautiful dance. Yeah. Yeah. It's teeny, but it's, it's Oof, so good. I know Large you, in stature. <laughs> you guys may disagree. I will die on this sword. Okay, yeah. good. There are cool pieces, of slabs of granite out there that I've seen. So totally. don't, agreed. so don't agreed. sleep on it. I would say instead of porcelain, whatever your thing are quartz, like any of these yeah. faux stones, I would rather see granite and have a real living finish. And the granites today are interesting. Mm-hmm. As yeah. long as it has like a, I don't even know how to like, really describe it like the rhythm of it is is really big you don't yeah. want the small one that's like yeah yeah like it's mm-hmm. there is some type of like large movement, movement happening yep. yeah. Yeah. yeah i will say this in general about design right now a large movement in wallpaper murals are all the rage instead of the teeny tiny prints right mm. so that's the same for our slabs I think the rugs as well. We're not like little tiny speckling. We're like a really big, beautiful moments. pattern. So we're having a big, abundant pattern moment, I feel like, in the history that we're in right now. Mm. It's been lasting for a long time. I mean, yeah. right? And I think it's just memorable. You know? yeah. and, so, and you mix other scales with it. It's not like everything is a large figure. And even like when we're doing a ca- like a countertop that has like wild veining, like we're talking about, that looks like generational wealth, we'll likely go to like a two by two like marble or something on the floor so that it's not competing. Yeah. You're not doing a massive veining on the floor. And and you can actually. Great point. We, we've no, done that's that a before. Great point. But for most cases, you're doing something that scales well, you know, like that isn't the same. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so, and I think that's a really good rule, like for timeless, timelessness. I think there's, there are bathrooms where they're doing the same marble on the floor and there's the same marble on the shower walls and the same marble on the countertops. And that's a mood. That's a total, like all, you know, all in you know, a lot of money mood. Yep. Um, but I think just for like timelessness, Mm -hmm. well, if it's your style, it's timeless. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Just for you as a rule, I think just like change up the scale. So that's not something that you're going to, it's going to clot, you know, 20 years down the road. Yep. The last two points we want to make is a human element Mm -hmm. and display your collections. I would say along with the human element, something living Mm -hmm. like, uh, plant you know yes yeah. totally i love that something alive succulents just yeah. kidding i mean 
Just like buckets <laughs> of succulents. Feel, yeah, yeah, a wall of succulents. <laughs> um, uh, no, I agree, though. There is something about that. Even when we're trying to style a cocktail table, we're like, mm, I need something organic. I need, a, I need a, a palm and a glass of water. I need a living plant. We need those organic lines. The touch of life with is this what we call it. Touch of life. Yeah, we need something living. Yeah. yeah, that always is like, that's what was missing of live flowers, um, vegetables on a cutting board. Um, something that's alive, we need to be able to make that styling be done and then we can shoot it. Yeah. 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 Love that. Yeah. In addition to plants and stuff, for me, though, too, I think like a human form. Oh, yeah. Sue also, loves a nude. Uh-huh. I do love a nude. And I have like a little, again, in my in our little bathroom, I have like this really beautiful nude that we have above there. But it's just like it's a figure and it's a movement that's not being seen anywhere else. So your yeah. eye like catches it and you're like, that's cool. Okay, let's keep looking at everything else. But it just, it throws you off a little bit. Yeah. Same thing with like old Mr. Ha- Mr. Hatch's face. Yeah. You don't, if you hate like, p- like paintings of pig- people, mm-hmm. you don't have to do this. Get a palm. Yeah. But if you're into it, like it's, it's a cool, I think very like editorial way to like make a move. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. like say something in a space. Yeah. So I think like even like living figures or, you know, some type of subject within your art, mm-hmm. I think is also a really good way especially if the scale of it's right yeah also don't forget the art in spaces like that that aren't your living room mm-hmm. i'm saying this because mari and i argued all weekend about where we were hanging sure. we got like 15 things framed it was stupid so we were that's all we did all weekend was hang stuff <laughs> so much money on that she <laughs> <laughs> twice as much as i oh thought i was gosh. going to but oh. It was worth it. I feel like we had to. Lunch today, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm skipping lunch this week for that. <laughs> it's so true. Hashtag, really right. is. It's Hashtag so framing true. Them, right? Oh my gosh. Can I, can I, dig- <laughs> this is, I have to say this one because oh. I noticed uh, Ross Cassidy posted this on oh. his Instagram yesterday. So cute. It said, why rich people don't cover their windows. It's because n- even the 1% can't afford drapes. The one oh percent of the wealth, <laughs> draperies are so so true expensive. I'm just worried about myself right now. <laughs> even <laughs> even the one percent oh can it. God. The unexpected status symbol has become a fixture of high end homes. If you have drapes, also if your art is framed, right? Yes, that's exactly. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. There if are just certain things <laughs> that that you don't expect to. Yeah, it's it adds up. Yeah. My yeah. M- Mari was like, "These are so awesome! I want everybody to see them." It's like. I conceded. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's my wife. Like, I wanted to make her totally happy. It's my goal in life. Yeah. But I'm already thinking, about, okay, we're going to need artwork. It's like, because I wanted to put some art in our closet. Because it's kind of, it's almost just like, you should. Yeah, yeah, I know. Totally. Right? <laughs> yeah. And I, it's kind of, I mean, think of me what you will for this. But it's like, if I'm showing someone a house, be like, oh, yeah, then we get the closet, some art in there. It's a Picasso. Whatever. Yeah. There's a yeah. Picasso yeah, in there. Come on. Like, like, I'm sorry. Like, that's almost to me, like, what I, I, I like, th- I like shock wealth. value. Yeah. Talk yeah, and, about wealth. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and yeah, like I mean, he has a framed piece of artwork in his closet. Gosh. Uh, He's made it. So yeah, I'm but, asking Corey for a small yeah. business loan. I know. Um, but yeah. I, I think yeah. it's important to not forget because even if no one's going in it, like I think I would see that every day and be like, yeah. I love that. Yeah. You know, like that. Guys, it's a Re-energizes move. Re-energizes me. Art's a move. Mm-hmm. It is a move. You know? Power play. Yeah, it's I those know. expensive sneakers. I know. It for is. the house. It is. Do you yeah. Remember, I remember like back in the day, like when Allison first started and we walked through one of Robert MacArthur's parade homes. Yeah. And he had a massive oil painting sitting above a tub, like an yeah. actual built-in tile tub. And the art was hanging on the tile. And I was just like, holy shit. Like uh-huh. he did that. And like, I can see the oil marks. Like that's a real, like that's a. That's an original. Yeah. And he put it in the bathroom. That. Uh-huh. Yeah. We like, we hung geez. an original piece of art in a pantry so in Tiger Oak. Yeah. We need to show the picture of that. Yeah. That dark green pantry. And, and that, that was like one of the only pieces so she good. had like that she brought. Yeah. And we put it in the pantry. Ah, so and good. Like, and how do you not like take people in there? Yeah. It's an experience. Mm-hmm. Like don't. Yeah. Don't mm-hmm. abandon those spaces when it comes to putting art up that should have been my argument over this battle it's like damn it babe, we need a reason to get people into our closet <laughs> <laughs> I like know. no one's ever gonna be like hey do you want to go upstairs and see my closet no one's gonna be like yeah, yeah. but it's like hey you want to see this art piece cool piece of artwork no. i have uh-huh. upstairs you know that sounds more normal yeah that's what i should have here's done. a cigar you know what? <laughs> coming to my lair <laughs> i'll say this along with closet and display your collections yeah. we just barely launched we're just barely launching what's called the darlene necklace holder which is which is a marble little 
little decolletage with a little neck so you can drape your necklaces on it. And I think that's another great way. We created it because, what are you, I don't know, what are you going to say? I mean, I know (laughs) why. Because we make fabulous, like, closets and everything and we're just like always looking for this like bust or something to display your collection Mm -hmm. yes maybe you want to like drape scarfs around its neck maybe i think you could get several of them we also have a brass line display box that can go over the top of it so let's just say you do have this amazing collection of necklaces but you know you don't wear them like very often but you still it's necklaces as art on a sculpture Mm -hmm. and you still get to enjoy them every day whether it's on your person or on that marble little decolletage you get to walk in your closet and it's still being seen as art you know what I mean and maybe it's the wedding necklace maybe it's that you have your grandma's Chanel Mm -hmm. necklace and it's not your style but it's so fab but you're just keeping it in a box in a drawer and you never get to enjoy it and so I just love so much this um, Um, display your collections because then they become art to you and you get to enjoy them with your eyes at eye level and you get to interact with them whether you're wearing them or not whether or not you're you know I think having the art displayed out the the necklaces your bracelets your watches um you know we have beautiful big crystal slabs that you can put all your sunglasses you know on and that those become really interesting and tell your story Mm -hmm. and make that space feel more like you that's what I did with the uh, acrylic um, art stand that we have, yeah. what that has become, and like my kids love it too, uh-huh. is that it's in our music room is where my record player is. And then every time we're like doing like playing a record, it's like the now playing, like we get to oh, cute. set it up there. And then that's I like the rotating it. piece of art in the room. That's awesome. You know? And cute. yeah, th- to me, I'm just like, that's a like awesome a way to like. CD at Greywell. Yeah, exactly. Jeez, that's awesome. <laughs> exactly. Like, that's so cool. <laughs> and yeah, I was just I like, well, and then it's like a way to also like, I love these records, not only mm-hmm. because of like, you know, the aural quality of a record player, but um, like the artwork too. Cause back then, the artists, right. the, like they, they missed that. Yeah, they like took pride in the artwork that they were kind of like sharing with their music. Mm-hmm. You know, they represented an totally. entire album and collection of like music. Exactly. Like, it's yeah, I missed that. So I was like, I'm going to show that Smart. here. And Love that. you know what I mean? If you want to hit play, that's what it's going to mm-hmm. That's it. Play awesome. Film. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. It's like at the movie theater now playing and mm. it's like the movie poster. So yep. Is that your collection? Okay. Probably your collection, I bet, is records. Records. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like music, like actual instruments. Yeah. I mean, I. What are your collections? I hung. You're showing. Yeah. So records uh, in that room. I hung up all of my, well, oh. most, all, like all my cool guitars. Like there's one that I built. The very first one that I bought, I sold the very first car I had and walked everywhere, skateboarded everywhere to buy this bass. That's awesome. That's that hanging up cool. there. Um, so, yeah. So, like, instruments. Uh, I would love one day to have, like, a collection of art. like mm-hmm. and, and, like, unique art. I think I want to kind of continue doing, like, you know, commission pieces and, and stuff like that. That would be fun. That's obviously expensive. Um, but, yeah, I would say, like, my instruments and... Yeah. and uh, um, cause now I have like a cool piano that I want to refinish one day. So instruments and records. Yeah. I love that. Suze's collections are art, lots and lots and lots of art. Yeah. yeah. So good. Um, I'm trying to think what, what do I collect as art? Um, one of the things that came to mind was one of my girlfriends is a potter and, um, the clay maven. And I probably have like five or six pieces of hers, like whether it be on a bookshelf or a mantle or a coffee table, or I have like um, basil growing out of one in my kitchen, but it's just so fun. I like, I think about Christina, who's a senior designer for us that makes her own pottery and she actually doesn't sell it or anything. And she has it all. I'm like, man, I would love a piece of Christina's like that way. But KK, do you hear that? I don't you know. You have a lot of really cool, like, um, like home decor accessories that are like vintage that you're like, Oh, I just picked up this like random yeah. place when I was like, your curiosities. You know, I'm like dang, like, that's awesome. Based off yeah. Of like your collection. Exactly. Yeah. yeah you that's true. Objects. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's, your, that's your jam. Yeah. I yeah. Will, but in the matter of just like small spaces showing a collection, there's a grandeur to it. Yep. You know, and if you have a lot of like one thing, again, it feels very abundant mm-hmm. and it doesn't make the small space feel small. Like if you just had one, Mm-hmm. you know piece of clay maven sitting on that you know mantle whatever but if you have a collection like i collect like a lot of like ceramics too you know yeah. and like them all seen them all together as this family yes and on your mantle you yeah, have all I, the and silhouettes I together to style it and i even tried my sister-in-law gave me a candlestick for christmas and i'm trying to like incorporate that and i probably and it's up yeah. right now it's pretty 
but I probably will go back to my collection because I just love the way it made that. It whole looks so feel. good. Yeah. So I, love anyway, that. I think a collection in any regard, whatever it is, mm-hmm. if people can feel that as they're going through this house, the house will feel like it stretches forever because the collection stretches continues. Forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And continues. it makes it so much more interesting. And in a small space, you want there to be a lot of interest, I think. And it makes it deeply personal too, which I love. Just want, like, you just want a small space. You just want to curl around every corner and be like, what they put there? Yes. You know, or like, it's just, it, there's such a curiosity and an intrigue uh-huh. to small spaces. Cause you're just like, how can they live in such a small, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's not that small Rowan, yeah. but, but yeah, yeah. You can pay attention to the details. And I think that that's, what's so great about a small space. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Very good. You guys, thank you for listening today. If you liked our episode, give us a five-star review and we would love to hear from you on what topics, just like we talked about Rowan Graybeck's um, topic today. We would love to hear from you about those, or if there's anybody you'd like us to interview that you think would make a great episode, you just send that to dear Alice at alicelanehome.com. Thank you for listening and we will catch you next time. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 